Next to Pachacacha stage is a two-spirit Sutina First Nation member of Treaty 7. He's also the G4 SN TTC's Director of Justice and hopes to foster community connection for all people of Turtle Island. Please give it up for Teddy Many Wounds. Siaskas, which is the traditional way to say thank you in my language. Oki, Ambawastich, and Dadanestada, which are the traditional greetings of the Treaty 7 territory of which we reside. I want to tonight, in the lens of which I'm going to show you, is to change the paradigm of which we all traditionally think about First Nations lives lived. And I wanted to share with you an exceptional life lived through the lens of my grandmother. I think it is very important that we redistribute and readminister practices and encourage and inspire those next generations to work together to create not only connection, but to also celebrate what should be celebrated amongst our First Nations community so that we can continue to inspire the next generations as well as build capacity with each other, for each other, and by each other. And so tonight's lens hopefully gives you a paradigm that shifts the narrative away from the traditional cinematic lens of which First Nations people have been prescribed and or have been exhibited through film, television, and stories. And so, I hope you enjoy the story of a life lived through the lens of my 95-year-old grandmother. So imagine, in 1929, being born on the Saddle Lake First Nation as a young woman with whose life was being already pre-prescribed to her by a government which unfortunately did not have its best intention meant for my people and meant for the First Nations people of these lands. And a father who, with the new children in his life, has had to navigate living with an Indian agent and living on a reserve where he is told it is illegal to practice his traditions, it is illegal to speak his language, but yet he held resilience through bravery, through integrity, through dignity, and shares that message so that we as First Nations can people can build lives led with exception and led with those practices that otherwise administer and acknowledge that we are dignified people deserving of traditions, deserving of all the things that make us important, including family. And this is my grandmother with her four children, who, two of which, her two daughters, are no longer with us today. One, unfortunately, took her life by suicide, and one, unfortunately, succumbed to her addiction. And today, my grandmother still sounds resilient through all of the challenges that were presented to her. Her father, my great-grandfather, who became the first Lieutenant Lieutenant Governor of this province, and who was the first Indigenous person to hold that position in the Legislature of Alberta. He also was the first man to ever wear a headdress in that Legislature while accepting this honour on behalf of the Solicitor General of Canada. He went on with his wife to meet royalty, this is him with the Queen of Elizabeth, to also challenge that narrative that we as First Nations people, although pre-prescribed and put into places like residential school that were meant to diminish and admonish our existence, he worked with dignity and he worked with respect to make sure that not only my First Nations people, my family understood that we are capable of these big and wonderful things, but my grandmother who's still alive today shares that narrative and here's her meeting the now King Charles of England. It's to also share that through, to, through the adversity of a First Nations experience and through the detrimental practices of colonization, we can still find ways and pathways to work with one another while still celebrating that which we are looking at here today, which is my great-grandmother and great-grandfather's, uh, I believe, somewhere in the 40th anniversary. But also not forgetting that as First Nations people, as people, we each have traditions and we each have ways of being and knowing that are not only important, that are incumbent for us in creating a space to all collectively call home on Turtle Island. I believe it is so incumbent and so necessary that we look at ways of which we are different and celebrate those. To a life lived in her next chapter, which is here with myself at my high school graduation, where my grandmother looks nervous as she could be sending me out into the world. 
thankfully by her by her grace by her beauty by her tenacity I would I've been able to live and have been able to share with my people wonderful experiences like this with my young cousin teaching him how to create a hot dog stick out of a willow something so simple but something so beneficial something that we can all share with one another does not matter our age does not matter our background but celebrates the beauty in our women which leads me to my next next component of the lens is looking at and supporting First Nations and Indigenous women and women. So we don't live in a world where we are living under an act and describing a crisis such as missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. To look at these two elders in my community and share the beauty and the love and the capacity for that through First Nations lenses so that one day a 94-year-old residential survive school survivor can walk her two-spirited grandchild down the aisle at his wedding, and I'm so grateful that she was able to not only do that for me, um, but she looked amazing. <laughs> As well, full circle, here's my father and myself meeting with the current left-handed lieutenant governor of Alberta. He's actually wearing the jacket that my grandfather was wearing when he was given the position and or when he achieved that position in high levels. We continue to not only imbue and embed these practices, but to also acknowledge that First Nations women are important, and when you support them, you support connection, you support, you support community, and it continues the legacy for those ancestors, for those elders that are not with us. And I would posit to believe there is not only importance, but there's beauty. There's beauty in seeing the next generation dance and encouraging that, encouraging that at each other's weddings while looking at our differences and celebrating those, while also acknowledging that there is space in all of our hearts for home, for respect, for values that are instilled in the principles and the tenets of love and respect so that we can also acknowledge the good work that each one of us is doing and smile, smile at the hope and the possibility for the next generation and the next generation and the next and also celebrate, celebrate all that is difference in us while also acknowledging that we as First Nations people still find grounding Find grounding sitting here like my grandmother is at a simple cafe in Millerville with my cousin who's a cancer survivor as also happens to be Down syndrome. It's these moments of peace, these moments of tranquility that through lenses and through cinematic journeys, we can continue to celebrate places we call home. And a perfect example is here. That's a pony that we recently adopted and actually all those dogs uh, attacked him, which is the reason we adopted him in the first place, to also understand that even through species, when we create the capacity for love and learning, we can also create the capacity for connection. If we can do it with horses and dogs, we can as well do it as humans. I want to finish tonight by also sharing with you where I call home. This is the view from the cemetery on Suits in a Nation where I am so blessed and grateful to spend almost every night with my husband, with my dogs, with my surviving, with my cancer surviving cousin Lily, and to also hope in all of you that I've inspired that we share not only the tenets of love, the tenets of respect, but also acknowledge differences in one another while celebrating those so that we can all continue to very, very intrinsically and with benefit call Turtle Island home for all of us home for one of us, and home. Thank you.